Hi there. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about our research results related to our principles and patterns of mechanisms curriculum. So first, if I asked you um, to sort these images on screen into different categories, there might be many different ways that you could do that. You might sort, for example, by liquids and solids, um, or you might sort by foods uh, and drinks that could be obtained more locally rather than those having to be made or transported from farther away. And any of these ways are perfectly reasonable, um, but there are times when we do need to have that deeper knowledge. If I need to know what's been locally sourced, then I need to know what grows nearby. I need to know a bit more about the growing season. Um, and it would be helpful for me to know some of those principles about that. So if you gave me a, a new food or drink to categorize, I could use my existing knowledge um, to have a pretty good guess about what might be available locally or not. Similarly in music, um, if we learn a piece of music as a series of unconnected notes, and if we forget a note or if we want to produce our own piece of music, make our own music, it can be really, really hard to do. But if we know about chords and more about musical theory and how, how pieces fit together as a cohesive whole, then if we forget something or we want to make something new for ourselves, then it's, it, it is much easier to do. The same idea works in soccer, where if we forget a page in the playbook, we can still score by remembering our system of having two players giving options to score by forming a triangle so you can have two options to pass when someone is pressuring you. Thank you. The same thing is true in chemistry. And the issue that we face in chemistry is that we often find students trying to memorize pages and pages and pages of chemistry textbooks. And they memorize these things as a series of unconnected ideas, memorizing just for the exam and then forgetting it after that. And so they don't develop that cohesive understanding, those patterns or principles, and they can't use their knowledge proficiently in later contexts. They end up memorizing things that, that may look like this just for the sake of getting themselves through the exam. So the issue that can arise in their everyday lives or careers is that they can then have difficulty understanding how molecules and safety work in vaccines or how dilutions work to generate uh, things like uh, homeopathic remedies and the fact that they essentially get diluted to the point of just having water left um, or connecting to local or global issues like the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So the way that we've changed the curriculum is, is meant to equip students to sort by deeper patterns and principles in the same way that experts do. The thing is, we need to investigate whether it works. Are all these things that we're doing worth the time and effort, both on the parts of professors and students? Is it leading to better outcomes? And we also wanted to challenge the idea in this new curriculum that we think is sort arranged and organized in the way that experts think. We want to understand if experts really do think that way or if we're working just off an incorrect assumption. So the students working on this project um, started up with uh, Kel Kelly and Minwon and then Keith. And Kelly and Minwon started out by interviewing students uh, and professors all the way from uh, first and second year organic chemistry all the way up through graduate students and then professors. And then Keith did the same sort of thing this time only with second semester organic chemistry students and in a larger scale online design. So what they did essentially using chemical reactions was to ask the, the participants in the study to arrange those different images that they see into categories much like I had put the, the liquids and solids on the screen earlier, this time with chemistry reactions. So we notice a couple of things. First was that the, there were many different ways of, of, that people decided to sort these things that they saw, these reactions they saw into categories. The PhD students and professors sorted in a bit more organized ways than the undergraduate and master's students did. The other thing was when we looked at the way that they sorted, the decisions they made, the undergraduate and, and MSc students were sorting more by surface level kinds of features, static, things they saw just right in front of them, a bit like sorting by liquids and solids. Whereas the PhD students and professors sorted by deeper process, more connected kinds of patterns and principles. One of the things that we wondered about though was that you know, the, the way that we sort depends on the given context, what we choose to do at the time. Am I thirsty? Do I care about buying things locally right now? Do I just need a sandwich? Um, do I want to eat red foods today? And so was it the case that people were just choosing 
to sort in a given way for a given moment based on how they felt, or were they capable or incapable of sorting in different ways? So we wanted to look at their ability to sort by those deeper things. So this is what we asked them to do. Sort by deeper patterns and principles. So on average, what we saw early in a semester uh, was not great. We saw only 23% of the students were able to sort by deeper patterns and processes. And these are the organic two or second semester students at this point. Things got better later in a semester. The average score increased, still not fantastic, but to 45% average scores. We also took a look at what happened to students' choices in categorization. So when they were able to sort just however they wanted to, from early in the semester perspective to later in the semester perspective. So we looked at the percentage of students who sorted, made their categories of these reactions by deeper categories, or process-oriented categories, and early in the semester, 42% um, of the sorts were done by these deeper categories. And later in the semester, we were up to 61%. So there certainly is change, but we're not quite satisfied yet. So we're trying to understand what exactly it is that helps students see, categorize, organize their thinking by these deeper levels that we see with more advanced graduate students and professors. And what we're hoping by equipping students to sort by deeper patterns and principles, that they'll be better able to understand, analyze, interpret existing reactivity of molecules, that they'll be able to better predict reactivity using that cohesive knowledge, and that they'll be able to transfer or extend that knowledge into other contexts, like later courses um, and in their everyday lives and in their careers. So that's our hope.